Welcome to Review Central. This is OopCat Reviewer number 7, featuring questions for the OopCat Mathematics Proficiency Subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the University of the Philippines College Admission Test, or OopCat. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous OopCats. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number one. Suppose that the hypothesis P is all basketballs are round and the conclusion Q is the earth is round which of the following is the contrapositive statement of, if P, then Q? A. If all basketballs are not round, then the earth is not round. B. If the earth is not round, then all basketballs are not round. C. If all basketballs are not round, then the earth is round. D. If the earth is round, then all basketballs are round. The correct answer is B. The contrapositive statement of, if P, then Q is, if the earth is not round, then all basketballs are not round. The proof of contraposition, or contrapositive statement, is formed by negating both terms, that is, P and Q, and reversing the direction of inference. So to find the contrapositive statement for our given proposition and conclusion, first we negate both statements. All basketballs are round becomes, all basketballs are not round. The earth is round becomes, the earth is not round. And then we reverse the direction of inference. In the original statements, all basketballs are round, P came first and, the earth is round, Q follows. In our contrapositive statement it should go the other way around. Therefore, the contrapositive statement is, if the earth is not round, not Q, then all basketballs are not round, not P. Question number 2. Find the equation of the line that passes through the point, x equals 1 and y equals minus 2, and the point of intersection of lines 2 x plus 3 y equals 5, and 4 x minus 7 y equals 9. a. x minus 5 y equals 11. b. 3 x minus 2 y equals 7. c. 5 x minus y equals 7. d. 2 x minus 3 y equals 8. The correct answer is B. Recall your geometry topic, two point and a line. Let's start solving this problem by expressing the first equation in terms of 2x. Let's label the resulting equation as equation A. Step 2. We proceed by substituting equation A into the second given equation. We should arrive at y equals 1 over 13. Step 3. We substitute our computed value of y back into equation 1 and proceed to compute for the value of x. We should arrive at x equals 31 over 13. Step 4. With the values of x and y now known to us, we can now proceed to find the equation of the line that passes through the point, x equals 1 and y equals minus 2. Recall that the two-point form of a line in the Cartesian plane, passing through the points x1 y1 and x2 y2, is given by the equation as shown. Let the coordinates of the given point be the values of x1 and y1 respectively, and our computed values of x and y from the two intersecting lines as x2 and y2 respectively. Let's substitute the values of x1, y1, x2, and y2 into the two-point form equation. After some simplifying, we should arrive at y plus 2 equals 3 halves times the quantity x minus 1. Step 5. We can simplify the equation further by multiplying both sides by 2 and eventually arrive at the equation, 3x minus 2y equals 7, which is the equation of the line that passes through the point, x equals 1 and y equals minus 2, and the point of the intersection of lines 2x plus 3y equals 5, and 4x minus 7y equals 9. Question number 3. Which of the following is the solution to the inequality, the absolute value of the quantity 1 minus 2x, is less than 5?
The correct answer is A. Recall the topics on linear equations, quadratic equations, and inequalities in your algebra. Let's solve the given inequality. Step 1, to solve an absolute value inequality involving less than, such as our given inequality, we replace it with a compound inequality. The quantity 1 minus 2x is greater than minus 5 and less than 5. And then we proceed to solve as usual. We subtract 1 from all three parts of the compound inequality and end up with minus 2x is greater than minus 6 and less than 4. Next step is to divide all three parts of the compound inequality by minus 2. Now, recall that when multiplying or dividing an inequality by a negative number, we must reverse the less than and greater than symbols. We should end up with a compound inequality, x is greater than minus 2 and less than 3. This corresponds with the graphic representation and answer choice A. Question number 4. If f of x equals the quantity 3x minus 2 over the quantity x plus 5, and g of x equals the quantity 5x plus 2 over the quantity 3 minus x, find g times f of 2. a minus 2. b minus 4 over 7. c 4 over 7. d 2. The correct answer is d 2. This problem is about the product of two functions. First, let's substitute x with 2 in the first equation. We should quickly arrive at 4 over 7 as the answer. Since we are dealing with the product of two functions here, g times f of 2 can be rewritten as g of f of 2. We already know f of 2 to be 4 over 7, therefore, we can rewrite g times f of 2 as g of 4 over 7. Replacing x with 4 over 7 in the second equation, we'll eventually arrive at 2 as the final and correct answer. Question number 5. A scuba diver descends 80 feet, rises 25 feet, descends 12 feet, and then rises 52 feet where he will do a safety stop for 5 minutes before surfacing. At what depth did he do his safety stop? A. Minus 15 feet. B. Minus 14 feet. C. 14 feet. D. 15 feet. The correct answer is A. Minus 15 feet. Tip. Give all the descending distances a negative sign and the ascending distances a positive sign. Write and solve the numerical expression as follows, minus 80, plus 25, minus 12, plus 52, equals minus 15. The diver took his rest stop at minus 15 feet. Question number 6. Evaluate the algebraic expression y times the quantity, the quantity x over 2 minus 3, minus 4a, when a equals 3, x equals 6, and y equals 1 half. a minus 7, b minus 6, c minus 5, d 5. The correct answer is b minus 6. Substitute the values for the variables into the expression. Take note of PEMDAS rule in solving the expression. So we'll initially have 1 half times the quantity, the quantity 6 halves minus 3, minus 4 times 3. Applying PEMDAS rule we simplify this further to 1 half times, 3 minus 3, minus 12. From here we should have no more trouble arriving at the final and correct answer which is minus 6. Question number 7. What is the ratio of the perimeters of two similar polygons if the ratio of their areas is 64 to 729? A. 2 is to 3 B. 4 is to 9 C. 8 is to 27 D. 16 is to 81 The correct answer is C. The ratio of their perimeters is 8 is to 27. Do you still recall the topic on scale factors in your geometry? I hope so. Let's do a quick review, just in case you already forgotten all about it. Let's use this simple image for illustration. The scale factor for the two rectangles shown is 2. How? Take a look at the widths of the two rectangles, 3 and 6 centimeters. 
The width of the bigger rectangle is 2 times the width of the smaller rectangle. Same scale factor applies to the lengths. The length of the bigger rectangle is 2 times the width of the smaller rectangle. The same scale factor applies to the perimeter too. The perimeter of the smaller rectangle is 16 cm. The perimeter of the larger rectangle is 32 cm or 2 times the perimeter of the smaller rectangle. That's how scale factor works for lengths, widths, and perimeters. But how about for areas? The scale factor for area is simply the square of the scale factor for length. In our given figures, the scale factor for length is 2. The scale factor for their areas is therefore 2 squared, or 4. By the way, scale factors apply to any polygons or shapes. If you need a more in-depth refresher on scale factors, look for our explainer video on the topic. You will find the link in the description, if and when the explainer is posted in our channel. Now going back to our given problem. Step 1. Let P1 equals the perimeter of the first polygon. P2 equals the perimeter of the second polygon. A1 equals the area of the first polygon. A2 equals the area of the second polygon. Step 2. We just learned from our quick review on scale factors that to find the scale factor for area, simply square the scale factor for length or perimeter. Since the areas are already given, we need to get the ratio of their square roots to get the ratio of their perimeters. Therefore, the ratio of the perimeters of our given polygons is 8 is to 27. Question number 8. How many different ways can 5 students be seated in a round table? A. 5 B. 10 C. 24 D. 25 The correct answer is C. There are 24 different ways that 5 students can be seated in a round table. The number of ways of arranging n objects in a round table is given by the formula, the quantity n minus 1, factorial. With 5 students, the number of arrangements is 5 minus 1 factorial equals 4 factorial equals 4 by 3 by 2 by 1 equals 24. Question number 9. What is the median of the first 100 non-negative integers? A. 49 B. 49.5 C. 50 D. 50.5 The correct answer is D, the median of the first 100 non-negative integers is 50.5. Let's first recall the definitions of mean, median, mode, and range, as shown. The median is the middle value. So how do we get the middle value of the first 100 non-negative integers? The first 100 non-negative integers are 1, 2, 3, all the way to 100. From 1 to 50 there are exactly 50 non-negative integers. From 51 to 100 there are also exactly 50 non-negative integers. The two middlemost items slash numbers are the numbers 50 and 51. In this case, the median is the average of the two middlemost items or numbers, which is 50.5. Question number 10. Find the sum of the series. 91, plus 85, plus 79, plus 73, plus all the way down to minus 29. A minus 651. B minus 144. C 144. D 651. The correct answer is D. The sum of the given series is 651. The given series is an arithmetic progression. How did we know that? Simple. The increment between the terms is a constant, in this case minus 6. Recall the formula to find the last term, or any term, of an arithmetic progression. A n equals a 1 plus the quantity, n minus 1, times d. Where? A n is the last term of the arithmetic progression and is already given as minus 29. A 1 is the first term of the arithmetic progression and is also already given to be 91. d is the increment of the arithmetic progression. We already figured this out earlier to be minus 6. To solve for the sum of the progression, first we need to know how many terms there are. From the above formula, we can solve for the number of terms of the arithmetic progression, which is n. 
Substituting the given value should leave us with n as the only unknown. We should quickly solve for n to be 21. So the given arithmetic progression has 21 terms in all. Now, to find the sum of the series, use the formula to find the sum of an arithmetic progression, s, which is s equals n times the quantity a1 plus a n over 2. We should quickly arrive at 651 as the final and correct answer. You have just completed UCAT reviewer number 7, which featured questions for the UCAT mathematics proficiency subtest. If you wish to watch more UCAT reviewers for the UCAT mathematics proficiency subtest, check out our UCAT mathematics proficiency reviewers playlist. Check out also our other OopCat playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming OopCat, and we look forward to your exciting days as an ESCO or ISCA. Kadayan.